researchers in Portugal will want to compare the genome sequence of their patients with the genome sequence of other patients that have been studied in Norway or in Finland or in France. And so we need to find ways of sharing this data across national boundaries and we need to make sure that we have uh, standards that describe the data so that it can be understood by researchers in different locations in Europe. So, I mean, there are 160 research institutes that are affiliated with Elixir. So if we can access data from each of those centres, we're able to be game-changing in this field. And by game-changing, I really mean that we can access over 100 million participants. We can then link that all together and essentially drive forward research. We have a controlled data access repository called the European Genome Phenome Archive that stores that information. It stores the sequence and it stores some phenotypic information, so information about cohorts of people, diseases, um, some of the traits that those people have, and makes it available. It does it in a secure way. Cancer research is probably the more advanced area of uh, biomedicine. A few years ago, we thought that cancer was more of an homogeneous type of thing. Now we see that this, every cancer is a, is a different disease. When you talk to doctors, they see the persons one by one, and they do indeed personalized treatment. But the truth is that to do this personalized treatment, they don't have personalized drugs, and they don't have personalized genomics. So the hope is that the genomics will help doctors to do a, their personalized treatment more personal. So human data is very sensitive. We need to make sure that we set and manage standards to handle that data effectively. And that's something that Elixir is also setting out to do. So I think a really good example would be the beacon technology. Beacons allow you to interrogate data sets and ask really specific questions about human variation. Is this variant present in this data set? You can do questions. Do you have this mutation? Do you have cases with this mutation? How many? Three. Oh, then, then I can ask more questions and go through the ethical committee and all that. And it saves an enormous amount of time because it means that you don't have to download the whole data set and look for that yourself, but you can ask the question and then decide if you want the data set. And just that reducing the data transfer costs means that only groups who really care about the data set would need to then download it. So it's a way of having the repository and then tools, because it's one tool, there are other tools, keeping all the confidentiality, but in a productive way, in a way that you can gain by accumulating the mutation. It's very, very important for our customers and for ourselves as well. Pharma industry, biotech, now fast-moving consumer goods and even agri-tech are relying more and more on open data. This is a starting point of all the research. So you have your scientists spending time to think about what is the innovative question they're going to be asking and what kind of new data they're going to be generating. And when they have that, they can combine open data with their private data and find out if what they generated give them the insight that give them the competitive advantage that nobody has. You should be able to flick a switch and download reference data that is relevant to your research project. And so we have an obligation to help all of the researchers across these institutes to manage their data with uniform standards so it can be easily exchanged with other researchers.